this now seems heavy, pulling me to places that block sunlight. I have dwelt amid such barrenness before, learned to pierce openings sufficient to light my way, despite the persistence of shadows. Stars ignite within me, illuminating a universe brimming with hope. This is how it begins. I catch hold of faith's rope and swing to plateaus made safe for landing by such searching souls as mine. Upon each new vista, I dance in defiance and am freed yet again to flourish unbound by fear, ever mindful of traps and snares all about me. I cut my way through countless pregnant minefields, nurturing each tiny mustard seed I find along my journey, watering in the absence of rain with my sweat and tears, testifying with my truth, reminding myself and all who will hear that the sun will rise again. License and registration, he can sense your aggravation. On the head of the fallen I mean, this is a team effort. Remind me to keep going. Time, my shirt. Did you know that your hands came with a ripple effect? Like so. We got the same dreams. I mean, blood, sweat, and tears win by any means, poetry. Sway, look at me. Is a piece of the pie too good for me? I mean, Some may call it rock the mic. We call it poetry. Hello, and welcome to Sojourn with Words. I'm your host, Sister Joy, and today we have an uh, absolutely spectacular Ooh. session for you. We have with us a sister poet friend of mine uh, who is no stranger in Prince George's County. She's a writer, she's an author. She, uh, well, how about I share some of her bio information, officially giving credit where credit is due. So, with a BS from Appalachian State in Communications Disorders, MA in Speech Language Pathology, Masters of Library Science from North Carolina Central University, and Masters of Divinity from John Leland Center for Theological Studies, Monica Leek uses the power of information to reach others through creative content. Now, there's more, there's more. Monica's works include Faith of Our Fathers, 100 Daily Devotionals to Inspire, Encourage, and Propel the Finer Woman. Uh, she is a contributor to Lenten Devotionals, The Road to Calvary, Surviving a Season of Suffering and Resistance. Recipients, I'll get it. A Lenten devotional or dismantling white supremacy, 2018, 2019, and 2020 editions. I'm going to stop there because there's so much more. But for now, let me welcome my sister poet, Monica Leek, to Sojourn with Words. Welcome, Monica. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be a part of this program. Well, I'm happy to have you here and to introduce you to the Sojourn, of Sojourn with Words family. Our viewers are in for a special session today because if you couldn't tell from the intro, we're going to have an inspirational Sojourn with Words episode today. 
Yes. Uh, Monica, who is known in the Ebenezer AME Church Poetry Ministry as Chaplain Monica, uh, is one who has a strong sense of spirituality about her. She is a leader among women. And certainly, as you heard from the publications that she has authored, she is one who has much information to share. Monica, when you talk about poetry and inspiration and spirituality, tell us what ties that together for you. It, it all centers in God for me. I look at nature when I'm walking um, outside and see creation. I take in interactions um, with people and the experiences and the expressions of how we're all connected, interconnected as a global community that springs forth out of a creation motif from God, from okay. spoken word, words spoken, breathed life. Absolutely. Um, Okay. And so that's where it stems from, that creative okay. spark. So when, when, when people talk about finding your voice and staying true to it, the inspiration you're saying for you is God. And uh, when you're trying to stay true to your voice, as a writer, we are not monolithic. We have many areas that we delve into. And there are many facets to us as as just as spiritual beings on this physical planet here. Tell me about how, when you find your voice, when you found your voice as a poet and for others who are trying to find their voice and want to be true to it, what is that journey like? It's going to be different from, for everyone. For me, I'm the daughter of a pastor and my father is also a creative. And he's, um, he hasn't published, but he's written. Okay. And so his voice is, he has a very distinct voice. Um, he talks more, he talks more of kinds of from the fruits of the spirit and um, relationships and things of that nature and, the th and what he, and what he has written okay. um, or performed. And for me, while I may address those things, I don't sound like him. There's no way I could sound like my father. I have his genes, um, but his style, his presentation, though his perceptions are different from mine. Okay, so tell um, us about that, yours. Are, do you consider yourself to be a, a performance poet? I, I consider myself to be kind of pay, <laughs> both page and performance. Okay. okay. Um, so I've had opportunities through the PENS um, Ministry of Ebony and Me, which really was my initial launch into um, that spoken word type of platform. Okay. Um, and, and so me, that gave me an audience beyond um, just my preaching um, behind the sacred desk in a church setting. Okay, or, let, me share, let me share one moment with uh, our viewers because they don't know when you said pens, uh, there is a specific, that's a specific uh, term that uh, actually pens is the anointed pens of Ebenezer AME Church which is the ministry members and PENS is actually an acronym for poets empowered to nurture souls. So uh, you and I and, and several other members of Ebenezer Amy Church and community poets are members of the uh, ministry, the poetry ministry of Ebenezer and we are the anointed PENS. So for those that are viewing this uh, episode of Sojourn with Words, please be sure to reach out to us if you feel a calling and you'd like to connect with this ministry of spiritually led poets. Be sure, uh, certainly uh, Monica is our chaplain and I'm the president of that ministry. But today we're just sharing with the community 
one of the resources that is available right here in Prince George's County. And Ebenezer AME Church is one of the mega churches of the county. So we want to make sure that we let people know that uh, just as, this, as uh, Chaplain Monica and, and I have reached through this resource, we want to be a resource for the community. Just the Sojourn with Words is a resource for area poets. So is the uh, poetry ministry of the church. So now back to Monica Leek. There are many things that uh, happen when we are finding that creative voice. Uh, let's talk about the uh, access to opportunities for youth to develop the writing component as craft. Now, writing is different from performing. So as a poet, how do the two components come together and what, what comes first and how? Well, I think you start to develop those skills in writing as, you know, part of the curriculums in school. Um, I think so much of it now emphasizes uh, research based and writing essays and you're writing narratives on that kind of framework. So you're not getting as much exposure beyond maybe one unit of, of poetry or are in your junior, senior year, or maybe a unit in your freshman year of high school. So you're not getting that, hearing those words and expressions on a more frequent basis. So if you're not exposed or have a lot of, you know, exposure to um, a realm of, of expression, a realm of thought that we get from poetry, then you're missing a piece of ways of voicing yourself, okay. of expressing yourself. So when we have programs in our community, whether they be like workshops, writing workshops um, that are through um, your department as the um, poet laureate of the county, um, when you're offering opportunities um, for open mic, those kinds of things give opportunities for expression that youth and um, young adults may not experience during the course of their high school um, curriculum or you know grade school curriculum. Um, because of maybe time constraints or pacing guides and all of the expectations to meet state standards. So you're not, you're not getting as much or you're not being exposed to the myriad of writers um, that, you know, even community writers or those on a national scale. I know for me, um, most of poetry I delved into or found or discovered and rediscovered came through um, connect with a connection to my father who taught at Livingstone College as an English professor. So he had books and books and books and books and books. So I could, you know, I could find um, Cullen or I could find Hughes. I could find the works of Baldwin. I could, I could, um, find the works of Dunbar, but within my schooling um, experience, I didn't see those persons. I wasn't exposed to Maya Angelou in school. I wasn't exposed to Audre Lorde in school. I wasn't exposed to the works of Toni Morrison within the context of the school curriculum. So it's important for, you know, arts programs or you know, even recreational programs or community programs to have um, something developed that gives opportunity as well as provide some instruction and teaching as far as different styles of poetry, um, different uses of poetry, different ways of expression, rhyme and um, meter and, and structure and um, form and content and that there are no limits to expression. There are no limits to thought. There's no, there are no limits to um, 
topic content because you're coming from you. It's coming from you. It's coming from your heart, from your experience. Okay. Well, Monica, I, I think you've definitely given them, uh, given our viewers a lot to think about. Um, but we do want to hear some of your poetry. Yes. So um, let, let's start with uh, one of the shorter pieces that you might have uh, just to give a sample of uh, what poetry means to you as a woman of faith, uh, as one who has studied and shown herself approved, as the church would say, and uh, one who uh, has published her works and who is a leader in the, in the field, both of poetry and of the spiritual walk, women who are seeking to develop their spiritual walk. So, uh, Sojourn with Words viewers, it is my privilege and my honor to present poet extraordinaire. I'm speaking of my sister in poetry and my sister in Christ, Monica Leek. Monica, what do you have for us today? I have to share with you um, a piece entitled, She Breathed. She was the beginning, forming the heavens and the earth with nurturing hands rocking it like a baby with lullaby, calling it from void to form. As night covered the deep places of the baby's dimples and her movement swept over the waters, she was the beginning. Then she inhaled and exhaled and breath became word. Word became light. Light separated from darkness, word became water. Waters separated from waters. Word became earth and seas, vegetation and vegetation seeds and trees. Word became ruling lights of the day and night, living creatures on land and sea called to multiply. She was the beginning. She was word, word with God and was God. In the beginning with God, she breathed. Acknowledging the good of her creation, speaking blessing of fruitfulness and multiplication, evening and morning become days. She breathed and it was good. She inhaled and released breath and word together, making decision for creation of humankind. In her image and likeness to rule and have dominion over the creatures of the air, sea and land, yes, Humankind, she shaped from the clay of the earth in her own hands. And with her breath, humankind became a living soul. She was the beginning. All things exist because of her. Without her would nothing have come into being. In her was earth, fire, wind, life. Her life was the light of all. Her light shone from the darkness in the beginning. Never did the darkness overcome her light. Because she breathed, I am capacity that will not be crushed, destiny that will not be denied, poised in my priesthood, being perfected in my purpose, prophetic voice beyond value to speak life and breath into my sisters, inhale, exhale, rise and breathe. Okay, Monica Leek. Truly an inspirational poem. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Well, Monica, when you, we talk about inspiration to grow, what about poetry as self-care? When you think about, we, we often hear that poetry is a healer and uh, because it is the word. Poetry is the word. And certainly in that vernacular that we uh, use poetry, that is, is certainly truer words could not be spoken. So when you talk about poetry as self-care, tell us what that means to you. I think there is a practice of that you incorporate maybe a daily discipline of, of writing, um, of reflecting, of being intentional to do something for yourself. And so in writing things down, whether um, in a time of meditation, in a time of reflection, that's a part of, of care because you're stilling yourself, 
you're setting aside a time away from the noise, away from the complexities of the day-to-day -day routine um, to center, to focus, to gather yourself in a space to do something that's just for you. And words are power and life. Absolutely. And so if we choose to speak life into ourselves, we can do that through the written word. Absolutely. So when we talk about the spoken and the written word as art, we, spoke, we talk about poetry as self-care. We talk about poetry as a means for empowerment. What, uh, when you talk about the prophetic voice of poetry in times of crisis, and if ever there was a time of crisis, it is now. So let's, uh, let's hear a little bit about, before we hear one more of your poems, let's hear, uh, what are your views about the voice of, the prophetic voice of poetry in times of crisis and transition? The prophetic voice draws attention um, to not only the joys of our existence, of what's of the goodness in the world, but it also speaks to the pain. It also speaks to the hardships. And it's those words that give us hope and those words that bring us to a place of returning um, to center, returning to the source or reach of our faith are grounding us more, even more so in our faith and prophetic words give us direction. Exactly. Okay. And so in this time when we see unrest and conflict and misunderstanding and um, communication that's sending conflicting messages, it's important to hear that prophetic voice. Okay. Um, well, Monica, I, I want to make sure that we have a chance to, because time is getting away from us, but I want to make sure that we have a chance to let people know about your works that are published. Uh, certainly, uh, first of all, you were featured at the Ebenezer AME Church Poetry Ministries 2019 Black History Month celebration. Woo woo! We loved you. We absolutely, the community came out in groves and it was a wonderful celebration. Uh, you were also in 2019 the DC Poetry Project judge. And, and in 2018, you were the DC Poetry Project finalist. So, uh, you know, there are folks that know about you. But also, you published your first collection, No More Hashtags, Remembrance and Reflections, in 2018. And this year, who you calling? So <laughs> how can people be in touch with you? What, give us a website, an email, a contact. How can they reach you? Wow. I'm everywhere. <laughs> So um, my books can be found on Monica Leak, um, that's L-E-A-K dot com, or um, you can find me on Instagram at M Leak Poetry. You can find me on Facebook at M Leak Poetry, and you can find me on Twitter as M Leak Poetry. Okay, okay. So how about one more piece before we start to wind down? Um, a poem, another poem by the inspirational and the empowering Monica Leake. Sojourn with Words is waiting with bated breath. Thank you so much. This piece is entitled, Just Us, No Justice. Just I, just you, just he, just she, just we, just they, just me. Just you, him, her, us, just us. Just us most frequently stopped and frisked. Just us followed through stores as if we're going to shoplift. Just us, a group of friends can't walk down the street. Just us to be called thugs and hoodlums when we're just trying to be. Just us sagging jeans and natural hairstyles copying us, but you wouldn't want to walk a mile in our shoes, our shoes, our shoes. You wouldn't want to walk a mile in our shoes. 
just driving in our neighborhood to get stopped and pulled over, just us to be pulled out of cars until they've searched the whole car over, just us that even having a par pool party with friends, you find a reason to crash and begin your brand of law enforcement, just us rushed and referred to special ed, why don't you challenge and teach like your certificate says? Just us, you rezone, redistrict, and redraw the lines, not wanting too many in your home or school zone, which is where the truth lies. Just us for the simplest offense referred to the principal for the behavior, wanting suspension to be your savior. Just us when arrested require the use of excessive force, but others stop for burgers and fries on the way to the jail, of course. Just us that don't live to tell the story of having to stand our ground when a tea and a bag of Skittles are all that is found. Just us that because we know our rights and articulate them, you call it disrespect, but the next day you can find us dead in a cell, call it suicide and that ain't suspect. Just us reaching for license and registration and still get shot, no charges filed, no punishment for the cop. Just us, it's all fine when we're playing, taking hits on the field, but you can take offense because instead of stand, we kneel. Just us that you can justify redrawing voting districts and changing voting days and times, all in the name of reform reforming suspected voter fraud. When it's you that needs investigating, who do you think you are, God? Just us that upset over our own BT TV one and sitcoms, movies, music, and shows. We're fine as long as we're shucking it up and it's entertaining you. But if we do it for ourselves, you say we're being racist too. Just us when you label us very articulate. Maybe that's because of colleges and universities to which we went. Maybe for all your knowledge based on stereotype, not every black person is living that thug and ghetto life. Just us living in a lap of poverty like nobody sees the trailer parks or the broken down trucks behind the trees. Just us living on the welfare, checking the statistics because other rates are higher. See, this is what happens when you go off assumption and rumor. You play into a stereotype and fail to get the truth you searched for. Just us that you tell to go get over the past. Just us that you tell that we live in a post-racial time. Well, that sure didn't last. Even with the man in office, many of our community issues did not get to the floor. But those in power made sure to knock everything he offered through the door. Just us with the right, without the rights to lawful assembly to be able to freely voice our disagreement with leadership and the stereotypes of society. Yet when tournament time comes and cars get turned and businesses get looted, no one is concerned. Yet peaceful protests they will condemn. And when something jumps off, just generalize to all of them. So you say there's enough flame to share on both sides. We still got to live together. So you better recognize that it's not just about you not about your supposed superiority. It's not about us trying to take something from you that you feel such a need, a need to carry torches and wave Confederate flags representing your hatred and greed. Just I, just you, just he, just she, just we, just you, just they, just be. When you single just us, where you single just us, why you single just us, how you single just us, just us is not equal to justice. Just us is not equal to justice. Just us, no justice. Just us, no justice. Okay, well that closes out the session of Sojourn with Words. Monica Leake, thank you for the power. I'm your host, Sister Joy, and we will see you next time on Sojourn with Words. Be in touch and let us know what you think about this spiritual walk that poetry affords every single writer that chooses to step on board. See you next time. Join us. Sojourn with Words.
Stand is precise. No margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. Dare to program something internet breaking, record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to learn the difference between sedimentary and metamorphic rock. Go find those rocks. Dare to keep daring. Dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started.